Hi, I'm Dan, Senior Pastor at LifePoint. Thank you and welcome to LifePoint Online. The church, though, is a whole lot more than a video. It's a family. And we would love you to connect with us. And if you'd like to, send an email to hello at lifepoint.org.au. Or if there's anything that you'd like prayer for, we would just love to pray for you. So send a prayer request to prayer at lifepoint.org.au. Just get in contact. We'd love to hear from you. We hope you have a fantastic day today and you enjoy LifePoint Online. It's all going to be starting really soon. Thanks.
Hi everybody, my name is Steph and welcome to LifePoint Church Online. We are so excited to have you with us today. We have an awesome service planned. We're going to be discussing, you know, that big question about what can we ask God in prayer? Can we ask Him anything? And if we do ask it, does He have to answer that? But more on that later. First of all, we're going to hear a little bit about what's going on in our church. So first of all, women, we are having our women's conference for this year. It's coming up on the 10th of the 10th of October which is super exciting. Make sure that you invite any of the women in your life and sign up on our website. It's gonna be a great day together. Also, we've got our Acts 2 challenge happening. For this month, it, the challenge is that you have to try and help or volunteer someone outside of our church community. So make sure you get onto that and share your stories with us. Up on the screen, we're gonna have a number of different ways that you can give. If you're wanting to give to our cause, which is to seek to make Jesus known in this community, make sure that you log on to one of those options that's on the screen right now. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or to sign up to our LifePoint Family Facebook page for updates. Now, Jace has an update on what's happening with our property. Can I also just say a massive shout out to our property management team who has just been working tirelessly on you know, what we're doing with our property and all the little logistics that go into that. So thanks, Jace. Thanks, Steph. Yeah, guys, it's Jace here. I'm standing on our block right on the corner of Anzac Avenue and D-Bay Road. For those of you who don't know, you can see over my shoulder here, the massive billboard. You've probably driven past it before on your way to church at Grace. Um, it's such an incredible spot here. There's 110,000 odd people that go past it every day according to a traffic report done probably six months ago or 12 months ago. So it's just an amazing opportunity to be visible, to be a city on the hill uh, in our community, which is so cool. Uh, and that is our vision to actually be able to reach out to these, this, these houses, these streets, these people around us that need Jesus. This whole region needs Jesus. And that is our vision to see thousands of lives transformed by gospel. This block's not going to do that, but it's going to help us do that, to be that people that are present in the lives of those around us. Uh, so yeah, be praying for this block because the final piece of the puzzle um, in this DA process is stormwater. So we've had uh, amazing results and favor in different areas to get us through to this point. Uh, but we've had to kind of delay and draw out the DA process as we just figure out this last piece with stormwater, how to get the water off this block safely without impacting our neighbours um, or the neighbouring streets. So be praying for that. Um, if you want kind of any updates at all on more details, just come and chat to me, uh, come and chat to Dan, or if you know the PMG guys, our project management group, chat to them as well, find out more. Um, we want to be open about it, but just wanted to bring you guys a little update. So that's where we're at. Be praying. Thanks, Church. Okay, thanks again, Jason, and thank you again to that property management team. We're about to hear from Dan now for our message, but first of all, we're going to hear from our children, actually, a question about asking and receiving. Okay, kids, who do you come to when you want something, Daddy or Mummy? Daddy. <laughs> Why do you come to Daddy? Because he lets us. He lets us. He lets us. Oh, Zuki, who do you come to, mummy or daddy? Mummy. Mummy? Oh, why do you go to mummy? Um, because he cooks us dinner. So does, mum, does mummy say yes more or does daddy say yes more? Mummy. No, it's daddy! Wrong! Hey, Joey, who do you go to, mummy or daddy, when you want something? Ma, 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 ma. Mama. Well, as you can see, my kids know who to go to when they want something. Obviously, my daughter's a bit of a daddy's girl and my son's seemingly uh, mama's boys. <laughs> kids know innately that if they go to their parents, maybe they go to the right parent, they're going to get what they want. They know that my job is to just give them things. Do you know what I mean? I remember saying to my daughter once, you know, I just love you so much. I love to give you good things. I just bought her some toy. And she goes, I know, that's a good job. I'm like, okay. She, she just knew that. The other day, she said to uh, Harmony, said to my wife, Mom, can I have an ice block? And Steph rightly said, no, no, it's, it's dinner time soon. You can't have an ice block. So then she said, okay. She said, Mommy, I want to ask Daddy something. Can you go away for a second? <laughs> Bit transparent, maybe, but you get the point. Kids know they can go to their dad. I want to explore today, what if God was the same? 
What if God was eager to bless us? What if God was eager to give us good things? What if, what if God was like a good dad, even better than me? <laughs> Is that believable? He's, a, he's an incredible parent. That's hard to access sometimes. It's hard to believe sometimes. It's hard to imagine. I think that's the reason why we struggle to pray. Many people struggle to pray because they can't imagine God as being someone who wants to give them something good, is able to give them something good, or actually will give them something good. About a third, apparently, of us all Australians pray, okay? So people do pray. They obviously have this desire to ask. Even like a third of people aren't going to be someone who even believe in God necessarily, so... They obviously said there's something out there and I want to be able to ask. So that's what we're going to explore today. How good is God? What is he actually promising? And how do we access it? Jesus talks about prayer a lot in the Sermon on the Mount. This idea of asking God for something. And we're going to jump today straight to Matthew 7. He talks about prayer a lot, but this is one, probably the most controversial thing he says about prayer. Maybe the most naive thing you might say he says about prayer. Here's what he says. This is Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you, then, though you are evil, harsh, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? What an incredibly optimistic depiction of God, isn't it? It's like, what? what? Is God that good? Jesus seems like really convinced and it's really important to him that we see God as eager to bless us, as eager to give us good things. And he's just getting started. Like in the Gospel of Matthew alone, he says even crazier things. In Matthew 18 verse 19, he says, Truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Matthew 21 verse 22 says, If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. He repeats it over and over again. These, to be honest, like ridiculous claims about what God is going to do for you in prayer. Now, like most of the Sermon on the Mount, it's really easy to understand, genuinely. Like it's not hard to interpret, ask, and you will receive. What's hard is to live it out. What's complex is to put it into your life. Because let's just be honest for a second, guys. Does God work like this? How does it work? Can I ask for anything? Can I literally ask for anything right now and God's going to give it to me? I've met Christians who have said, yes, that's the case. Whatever you ask for, you're going to get. And if you don't, if you haven't got it yet, you haven't asked hard enough. You know, so you're going to get a car park in the car. <laughs> Everyone loves asking for the car park. You know, you're going to get the job if you just pray and believe. You're going to get the healing if you just pray and believe. And so many times that's happened to me. I've asked God and it's just happened. The Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, the, the last one, uh, he once said that, when I pray, coincidences happen. And when I don't pray, they don't. Like this actually, like this is actually works. The other day, this is a weird story, but the other day I was playing Frisbee on the beach, literally just three weeks ago. And I was playing Frisbee with, with one of those Frisbees with the metal rod in it, which makes it fly just awesome. But it, it was flying too well and it flew into the ocean and it just started to sink because it was metal. And so, you know, there's five of us, we all run into the water, we're all searching, trying to find this frisbee. But the waves came and it's just, you know, it's in the ocean, literally a needle in a haystack. We looked for about 10, 15 minutes, we just couldn't find the frisbee. So we started to head back in. And then I remembered this verse, okay? I'm like, oh, I haven't prayed. Like praying for a frisbee, it seems ridiculous. But I just said, hey God, 
I know you're kind and I know the frisbee doesn't really matter, but it matters to me. If I could just find this frisbee right now, that'd be so wonderful. And I kid you not, I put my hand in the ocean, I looked down and it was right in front of me, just floating, and I picked it up. <laughs> I was like, ask and you shall receive. Now, does it always work like that? I would love to say yes. But right now, I'm praying for other stuff in my life that I haven't reached into and been able to pull out. My wife, Steph, struggles with allergies and some stomach issues, and she's often quite sick and feeling nauseous. And right now, she's having a flare-up, like as we speak, over the past kind of seven days. And it's, she gets so sick every morning. Don't worry, she's not pregnant, okay? Three kids is enough for us. <laughs> Just so I don't, don't get the rumor mill starting. And, 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 you know, she wakes up and I say, how are you feeling? And she says, I'm feeling really sick. And I pray. I ask, how are you feeling now? And she says, I'm still feeling pretty sick. And every night I'm just praying, the last few days, praying, please, Lord, I pray. When I wake up in the morning, Steph won't be feeling sick. Please heal her. Take away this problem. And I asked her two days ago, how are you feeling? And she's like, still sick. So how does it work? Am I not praying the right way? Is God deciding not to do this and, and, and to do others? Have I asked the right thing? Here's the questions I want to talk about really briefly with the rest of our time today, okay? Just three questions. What does God promise in prayer? Because we, I know we can hold God to his promises, all right? Jesus apprentices, people that are following him, can hold him to what he says. So what actually does he promise? What can we ask for? Like, what, what's the list of things that God says, ask for these? And lastly, what happens if it doesn't happen? Cool? Okay, number one, what is God promising? This is really clear. He's promising to be a good dad. He's promising to be a good parent, better than you, better than your parents, better than any parent that's ever lived. He's promising that if you ask for what you need, bread and fish, he uses these analogies, he will give them to you. He won't give you something useless, a stone, or something dangerous, a snake. He's asking you to envision him as eager to help, longing to bless you more than you even want to be blessed. For some of you, that's a really difficult picture to have of God because you've been disappointed by God or maybe you've been disappointed by a parent and you might see God as critical or distant or uncaring or maybe even abusive. And Jesus doesn't leave any of those options on the table. He says, no, 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 no. Even bad parents give their children good things. God's going to do the same. God is promising to be a good dad. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door is going to be open to you. I think he's promising. If we, if, we, if we do the maths on this, okay, so if we ask, we're going to receive. That means if we do not ask, we're not going to receive. I got this idea from Tim Mackey from The Bubble Project. He's been really helpful for me. If you want to look up some of his stuff, it's awesome. So kind of, this kind of means if we... if. If we don't ask, there's some things we're not going to get. Now, I think there are some things God is just so good he'll give us anyway. But there are some blessings, I believe, that God is longing to give to you. That he won't until you ask. Because he doesn't want you to fall in love with the gift. He wants you to fall in love with the giver. He wants you to draw near to him in relationship. Come close. Just like I love when my daughter comes close to me and says, Daddy, could I please have a nice block? I love it. She's, she's, she's with me. She's bringing her needs to me and not trying to go get them herself. And I always say, thank you so much for asking, darling. God wants us to ask and is promising to be a good dad. Now, in the context of the story, we can't rip this passage out of the context. In the context of relationship, I think he's also trying to say, look, I'm not going to give you a snake if you ask for a fish. But I'm also not going to give you a snake if you ask for a snake. Joey, my little, my little baby, or I guess he's a toddler now, who you saw before, 
I take him in the shower sometimes. He loves a shower with Dada. As soon as I get in the shower, he's always like, shower, shower. And he comes in and I pick him up. And every time he points to my razor and he says, Dada, Dada. He wants that plastic, cool looking toy. And do I give it to him? Of course I don't. Now he doesn't know. He looks at me like, like you always give me cool plastic things to play with. He's got a whole bucket of plastic things to play with in his room. And this plastic thing, I say no. And he has no idea why. But it's, am I being a good parent? Of course I am. And sometimes we don't understand why God's holding something back. But he's promising to be a good parent, okay? He isn't promising to be your personal genie. But you don't want a genie, believe me. You want a parent. You want a dad who knows what's best for you and can't wait to give it when you ask. That's what God's promising. All right? So what can we ask for? Well, the short answer is everything, anything. We can just ask. God cares about every detail of our lives. And he wants us to draw near. He wants no rest from your requests. He just wants you to be near him asking, not going anywhere else for what you need. But in context as well, we need to put this passage where it is in, in this big sermon on the mount. Because in Matthew 7, he's saying, ask and you'll receive. But in Matthew 6, he said, here's what to ask for. Here's how to pray. He literally says that. Is when you pray, pray like this. So what are the kind of things Jesus says, if you ask, you're going to get? Well, they're right here. It's one of the most famous prayers of all time. Probably been prayed more than any other prayer in history. He says, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he says, very soon, <laughs> if you ask for this stuff, if you seek for this stuff, if you persist and knock for this, it will be given to you. God, I want you to be great, not me. Hallowed be your name. God, your kingdom come, your ways, your goodness, your rule come on earth as it is in heaven. Pray for your needs. God, I need my daily bread. What do I need today? What do I need? I need to turn my phone off while I'm preaching. For forgiveness. Forgiveness for yourself and forgiveness that you can then pass on to others. For guidance, for deliverance, for away from temptation, away from evil, into the good place. If you pray for this stuff, if you ask, God is promising to give it to you. He says, this is the best stuff you'll ever get in life. And I can't wait to give it to you when you ask. He wants to partner with you. Do you ever wonder why God wants us to pray? He literally says, your, your, your heavenly father knows what you need before you ask. Like, why does Jesus say, when you pray, pray that God's kingdom might come? It's like, why can't I just come? <laughs> like, you know, you well, imagine God saying, hey, I want you to pray for what I want to do. So just do it. But that's not how God wants to work. He's always, from the very beginning of history, he wants to work with his humans, with his children. He wants to partner. He wants to bring us into the story. He wants to work through us. And prayer is releasing the power of God on this earth. God can't wait to act, to move, to bless, to bring himself into the story if you would ask. That's how he wants to do it. Pray that God's power would be released on this earth. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> but lastly, what happens when you don't receive? Okay, so what happens when there's something good and you know it's a good thing? You know it's a God thing. You know in the heart of hearts, this is just this is a healing or it's, or it's kids or it's someone coming to know Jesus, or it's just something really, really good, or it's something I really, really need. And you've been praying and praying and praying and knocking and knocking and knocking, and God doesn't seem to give it to you. Your, your prayers just go nowhere, it seems. You're being ignored. 
I've been there. I'm still there in many ways. There's a few things I'm praying for still that I haven't seen happen. And I think this passage is saying a few things. I think one, Jesus is saying, keep persisting. You know, keep going. Be like one of those people that come to your door to sign you up to a new power plan. You know those, those muggers that come to your door <laughs> and they're like, hey, just, just, like, just keep knocking on God's door. Don't stop. I know that's hard sometimes when you just feel like giving up. But I think ultimately Jesus is saying, trust your father. Jesus knows what it's like for his dad to say no. Remember that. He enters into the story with you because he understands what it means to get a no. He said to his father at the end of at the end of his life in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Hey, I don't want to die. Of course, we know he was resurrected later, but in that moment he's going, I don't want to die. And then he died. He didn't get his prayer answered. Jesus wants to enter into your story today. To say, I'm here with you. I weep with you. I come alongside you in the pain. I know what it's like. And he wants to pray with you. The biggest prayer of trust you could ever pray. Father, not my will, ultimately, but your will be done. I trust you. I want you to picture for a moment, God is leaning in right now, okay? He's leaning into you. And he says, my child, I want you to ask. I want to give you good things. Because I reckon ultimately this passage is saying, when we ask God, no matter what we ask for, we're going to get one of two answers. We get a big fat yes, or we get a, I've got something even better. So let's ask. Let's be a people, an apprentices of Jesus who are happy to ask the Father for what we need. Because if we ask, we will receive. It's a bold promise, eh? Let's ask right now. Would you pray with me? How about right now, before we pray, you just ask God, just in this moment, wherever you are, on the couch, with your family, watching on your phone, just ask God for something that you would love, something you need, something you would like him to do. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Dan. Hey, a little update. Thank you to everybody who's been praying, including you, hubby Dan. Um, it just this morning, I have actually started to feel better. So it just go to show that when we persist with prayer, God does answer. So thank you so much for that. Hey guys, it's been such a joy to have you with us today. If you'd like to fill out our digital connect card, it's at lifepoint.org.au slash connect. We would so love to hear for you, from you, particularly if you guys are new on the scene. Connect with us, we'd love to stay in touch. Why don't you take some time now? We're gonna to worship together. The band's about to sing a song for us called Oceans. And it's all about stepping out in faith and getting that love from God, receiving from Him to be able to go forward in our week. So we hope that you have a blessed week. See you again soon. Oh, shit.